I, like many others, grew up playing games on my mobile phone. So I've kinda seen a bit of everything this genre of gaming has to offer. From the games we fondly remember, to the games we desperately try to forget, I've seen it all. So today I'll be sharing my mobile gaming experience through four games that shaped me as a mobile gaming legend. And to keep things fun, the further we go down this list, the more obscure slash cursed the games are gonna become. So will you, the viewer, be able to recognize all the games in this video? If so, then yikes, I, I apologize for what you've been through. It was a warm summer day, the birds were chirping, the kids were mewing, and I was given my very first touchscreen phone, a Stylo Brave. Stylo Brave. Oh wow, so amazing. Stylo Brave. From the very moment I got my first phone, I was immediately addicted to it. While some people can't survive without a shot of a vape, I can't survive without checking my dailies on Project Muse. One of the first games that had me absolutely glued to my phone was Geometry Dash. And I'm pretty sure you all know what Geometry Dash is, but for those living under a titanic shaped rock, you play as a block and you have to dodge obstacles to the sound of the beat. The Geometry Dash I've played the most of and is my personal favorite is definitely Sub-Zero, mostly because the songs on there were so hype. Like, who told him to go this hard on a level 1 song? My only problem with Geometry Dash is that it can easily become one of the most rage-inducing video games, especially if you play on a slow and laggy phone like I did. I tell you, the amount of times this game has almost made me break my phone, especially when you do a jump correctly and your phone lags and you hear the... Yo, yo, you good? What are you doing with the lotion? What are you doing with it? <laughs> but besides all that rage inducing stuff, Geometry Dash is gonna have to be a solid 10 out of 10. Like, come on now, what else did you think I was gonna rate it? If you know me, you know I love survival games. And if you stalk me, you know I also like character creation. Combine the two concepts together and then we'll get... Wreck. Wrecked is a simple game. You wake up on an island and have to find your way back to civilization. I know it sounds generic as hell, but trust me it's not. This game takes a more unhinged approach to your normal survival game. Not only are the NPCs in this game super unhinged, like they will attack you for as little as stealing the same air as them. One of my favorite part about this game is that it incentivizes combat over peace and... I never knew a game could make me feel so happy. Sometimes the game will put you in situations where multiple people are trying to beat you up, don't question it, and nothing on this good green planet hits harder than destroying, dismembering, dominating these goofy -ass NPCs that dare stand in my way just because I hit no on an option when I can't even understand. Not gonna lie, it's just one of those games you gotta play yourself to fully understand the fun of it. 10 out of 10 deserves all of its flowers and so much more. When I sat down to write this script, I knew I had to add a multiplayer game to the list. But I couldn't just throw any generic multiplayer game in here, so I decided to go for something more... unique. Obscure. Quirky. <laughs> uh, wrong slide. Mini Militia. Mini Militia is a simple LAN multiplayer game. And if you don't know what a LAN multiplayer game is, to sum it up, take any online multiplayer game and make it offline. And that's pretty much it. Growing up, LAN games were the lifeline of my multiplayer gaming experience. I've spent countless hours battling it out in random LAN games, mostly because I was burdened of the curse of being. <laughs> Dataless. There's not really much to say when it comes to describing Mini Militia. It's literally just a simple 2D shooter game with funny looking characters. I mean, you're literally looking at the gameplay. There's nothing more. Back in high school, I had a group of friends that would always play this game during break time and class time. <clears throat> I remember all of us abusing the hell out of the sniper bazooka combo, which looking back at it was extremely unbalanced. You pretty much get to see the whole map, one shot enemies, and even if they have a shield, you just switch to the bazooka and they're 
The fun of this game mostly came down to the trash talk and rage quits that would happen mid game. Some people would drop mines all over the place, get 11 kills with 8 of them being spawn kills. Some would troll by spamming gas bombs everywhere, sniping people without warning and teabagging. We were so wholesome. The game was really fun but after high school there wasn't really any reason to play it because you know, we all got busy, but Mini Militia, for all the memories, gets a solid 40 out of 10. I was thinking of what the final game I talk about in this video should be. For the final game in this video, I was originally gonna talk about Super Jewel Quest, a Java game that I played on my Samsung E1200 and got ridiculously addicted to. But then I remembered a game I played recently that is even more obscure and a little bit cursed. Uncle Ben didn't die for this. The fact that there's no actual audio in the game, like all the audio you guys are hearing is being added in the edit. What the hell? Oh my god. Oh, what the flip is that? This is just beautiful. Okay. I love the Among Us option. Well, that was Subway Spider Hero. Easy infinity out of 10. This game is obviously a hidden gem and you should all play it. End of the video. It's been a while since I made a last video, but yeah, I am back in the grind. Let's go. 2024 is almost over. We are moving into 2025. Oh my word. Things are just moving so quickly. Thanks for all the support on the videos. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Follow my blue sky or my Twitter. That's an order. Follow my Insta. That's a suggestion. And yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs>